TitleMatchNetwork.com. Well, you know, this is okay. This is shoot interview. You know, I could give, I could give different answers, but Crockett, uh, um, Well, I'll give you the whole answer. Dusty ran a show and he put together a complete show in the Orange Bowl down in Florida. And when uh, when he got the numbers back on what the show was, you know, the, the attendance figure, because it was something we, that we worked hard at, you know, it just, it was a, it was a number that wasn't true. You know, it, th there were more people there than, than than they said that there were. So there, there kind of became a, a clash there. So Dusty, Dusty left and he went to, went to, went to Charlotte. Right. And there were, there are certain guys, you know, that he took with him. He took, uh, he took Ron Bass and, uh, he took me, and he took Mike Rotundo and basically, you know, just in rough terms, you know, he just, he just stripped, you know, Florida championship wrestling, but it was, it was a money issue. So we went to Charlotte and I mean, Charlotte was uh, where Jim Crockett promotions were, uh, was, was, uh, uh, you know, it was their home. It was the, where, where their, their facilities were. Uh, we started out and the place was, I mean, it was terrible. You go to a building you, in a huge town in Charlotte, North Carolina, and you got 400 people showing up. So, I mean, dusty, Dusty had to grind in, you know, he had, had you know, these storylines and, 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 and working along the storylines and then, and following through with them and, and working in the ring. He did that, but Jim just didn't have the money, which he should have taken care of some guys because you know, he lost some people, but I got a check for a, for a two week period and I worked for for Jim Crockett promotions and for Dusty. And it was something that, you know, Dusty and I didn't speak about for a few years too. Was, you know, Dusty is one of my great friends. But I got a check for 134 bucks for two weeks. And man, I mean, you know, for two weeks and you're traveling everywhere. Geez, 134 bucks. And nowadays in nowadays money, you know, geez, you put a, a pair of tennis shoes costs that. So I called my dad and uh, George, uh, George Scott was booking for Vince McMahon. Then I called my dad. I said, dad, I don't know what to do. You know, I've been, you know, a couple of weeks here. I've made, you know, 300, 400. And now here it is. I got a $135 check. And the same thing happened again the next week. So he said, all right, I'll make a call. And he called. He called Vince McMahon and he, and he said, Vince, you know, I said, why don't you give my kid a try? And I mean, Vince evidently had seen me or, or whatever, but he brought me in there. And I don't know if it was the way Vince's mind works or if he knew why I left Jim Crockett Promotions, but the first week there, I made $6,000. <laughs> so I mean, from going from 134 bucks to $6,000, you know, he knew how to get your attention quick. Now, so, how how the locker room treat you at the time when you first got there? You know what? Paul Orndorff was there. Hogan, uh, uh, Roddy Piper. I wasn't really, you know, accepted into that clique, you know, right. because that's when the that's when Hogan, you know, was he was on his way up, and Vince was on his way to creating, you know, the 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 empire that he, you know, that he's done with wrestling now, the way that he's built it. So I was, you know, I was young and new and Orndorff kind of took a liking to me. So I got to travel with Orndorff some. And uh, uh, I had been talking to Rotundo, you know, and I told Mike, you know, I said, man, and he was getting paid the same thing that I was. And he was living in the apartment that I moved out of that my sister and Mike and I were living in. So I called him, I said, man, I said, if you want to come, Vince will take us. And, you know, Mike doing things the right way, you know, he went to dusting, he went to, went to Crockett, you know, and said, you know, I got to go, you know, I got a chance to go to the WWF and, and, uh, 
of course, Dusty and Crockett, you know, knew the tie-ins, you know, with Mike, with my sister. And so, you know, they, he, he worked out his two, two weeks notice, you know, which is the old way you did it two weeks and you were gone to your next, to the next place. And, uh, I don't know whose idea it was. I don't know if it was Pat Patterson or if it was Vince's, but he put Mike and I together and it was, you know, it just kind of, it kind of evolved from, you know, Barry Windham and Mike, Mike Rotundo to, I don't know what it finally ended up being called the U S express or, you know, right. but, but we had, you know, we had the theme song that from, uh, from Springsteen that Born played. Yeah, man. And we, and we went from just in, I mean, in an instant, we went from making 135 bucks a week to here we were getting these checks, you know, for five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, you know, which is unreal. Like our first year there, you know, I remember but here we were, you know, we were young and we were making two hundred thousand dollars, you know, two hundred and two hundred thousand dollars, you know, in 1980. That was 85. I think 85. Well. Dick Murdoch, like I said, you know, I, I knew him all of my life. Right. He was one of my dad's friends and, uh, you know, as well as, as Dusty's. But, uh, uh, you know, Murdoch, Murdoch was a true character. He was one of those guys that, you know, every every second was a laugh. <laughs> and And if he was mad about something, you knew he was mad. But 95% of the time he was... You know, happy-go-lucky Dick Murdoch, and and you could see it by the way he worked in the ring. You know, he was, guy was it was hysterical the way he could be sometimes. And uh, who was the other guy you asked me about? Adrian Adonis. Oh, Adrian Adonis. Okay, I I, I understand where you're going with that question. Uh, Adrian was one of those guys that uh, I didn't I didn't understand Adrian. You know, and he Murdoch and Adrian had to had to put me and Rotundo over for uh you know for the uh world tag team uh, belts there at the wwf and he just he didn't like the the idea at all and uh i'm, I'm trying to think back to what city he was in uh i think it might have been in hartford connecticut and i think that's where it was uh but you know he, he was just he refused to do it you, you know uh something that i've learned along the way you know ego Ego is a hard thing, you know, to, to get over. And a lot of guys have them and, and some don't. But, uh, you know, he, he wouldn't do it. But Murdoch, who I'd known all my life, said, you know, hey, man, we'll figure out a way to do it. We'll just do it. We'll do it right here in the ring, whether we have to do it with him or not. Right. So Adrian, Adrian worked the match, you know, and he was he always worked snug. You know, so everything was right there. You know, if you had a bloody nose after a match with Adrian Adonis, it was no big deal because, right. you know, he just he just worked that way. And man, you know, even though he was big, the way that he was, you know, he could move and he had the ability in the ring. But he just he just didn't agree with that decision. And I mean, him and Murdoch together, you know, man, I can't think of two different people that are, you know, more opposite from each other. And, and I'm sure that there are other people and other guys in the business that have different opinions about Adrian Adonis, but I didn't, I didn't really know him well enough because of what I saw of him, you know? So, right. he, you know, I, I just hate that, you know, that, that he went the way he did, you know, he, in a, in a car accident, but, but I just, I just didn't really know him because, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't want to know me. So, you know, there I was the young kid on the block, you know, just coming up, you know, just, just how it is. It's, it is right now, you know, you've got some of the veterans and then you've got young kids coming up that they're pushing and Vince decided that, that he wanted to, to push me in Rotundo. And he was one of the guys that just, he didn't want to do it. Right. Uh, Mike Rotundo is, is married to my sister and their, their oldest son's name is Wyndham. So, you know, Mike and I, like I said, you can count your best friends, you know, at least I can on one hand. And Rotundo was one of them. I mean, he was one of those guys that, that when uh, uh, we had teamed in Florida and uh, I, my, Mike was, Mike had been, uh, I guess he actually trained or learned to work in Germany. You know, he, he got set up there. There's quite a few guys in the business went over to Germany and, and to Japan to the dojos there. 
you know, to learn how to work. But Dusty put uh, Mike and I together down in Florida and, and uh, you know, we just kind of clicked. And then, you know, then I find out that he's seeing my sister on the <laughs> sides because my sister's living at my place. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny, but Mike, Mike is one of those guys that he's straightforward, you know, and he, and he won't, he won't tell you a lie. So, you know, he, he came and said to me, he said, you know, you know, I've been seeing Steph. He says, but man, you know, I've been, I've been straight with her. He said, I'm going to, I'm, I'm asking you, you know, if it's okay, if like I go out on a real date, you know, if she, if she can, you know, All right. You know, like come to my place. <laughs> and I said, I said, man, I said, you know, I, I love you. I said, but it's not my place. I said, she, she's her own person and you are too. I said, you do what you want to do. So then Mike, he went to my dad and man, he was shaking because huh. I was watching. I was watching from about 20 feet away. <laughs> I was going to see what the reaction was. Mike Rotundo had to, had the guts to walk up to my dad and, you know, and ask if he could go out with my sister. You know, even though he'd already done it a couple of times. Right. And, and, and my old man, you know, just, <laughs> you know, he really, he respected him for it. So, you know, it was cool. After that, my, my, you know, just, just like old time, he asked, he asked my dad, he said, can I marry your daughter? <laughs> you know, he gave, he gave her away. So, but that's the kind of person Mike is, you know, so still to this day, I, I speak to Mike, which, uh, you know, he's working in Japan now for all Japan. And uh, I probably speak to Mike two or three times a week. Even when he's in Japan, you know, he calls my cell phone. And, uh, you know, we just shoot the breeze, you know, see how each other's doing. It's, uh, and, and, you know, like like those friends, you know, I love right. it. Title Match Network.com.